Well, this is Face to Face Celebration Church. I'm Dennis Watson. I have as my guest this week, Pastor Sidney Hidalgo, pastor of our Celebration Congregation in Slidell, Louisiana. And this week we're talking about the subject of mastering mercy. Now, Pastor Sidney, we've been in a study of the Beatitudes for several weeks here on Face to Face, and we've been learning from Jesus how to experience God's best and God's blessings in our lives. And the Beatitudes, Jesus said, blessed are you if you do this, or blessed are you if you are this. Mm -hmm. Now, what he's saying is that if we want to experience more of God's blessings, we've got to become more blessable Blessable. in our lives. Correct. Now, don't just pursue the blessings, pursue becoming ble- more blessable. And today and throughout the rest of this week, we're going to talk about how to experience one of God's greatest of blessings, God's wonderful mercy in our lives. So in the Beatitudes, Jesus talked about the subject of mercy, right? Matthew chapter 5, verse 7. And it reads like this, if you don't mind me reading it. Sure. It says, Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Now, you grew up here in greater New Orleans. Yes, sir. So I grew up uh, born and raised in New Orleans, Louisiana. Right. My mom's from Puerto Rico. My dad's from Costa Rica. And we are bilingual. So my dad and my mom obviously came to this country to pursue a better future. Well, now obviously you were one of the first wave of Hispanic people. Your parents were one of the first wave of Hispanic people, Hispanic, Spanish-speaking people in our region. Yeah. And so I'm sure they might have found it tough finding work, finding a job, or, uh, or moving forward in life. Yes, because not only when you have to learn the English, you want also want to find a good job. And this is obviously as we move forward, we're going to see how much mercy we will given in that direction in our life. So your family understood what mercy was all about. Yes, but you know, a lot of people don't understand what mercy is all about. In fact, mm-hmm. oftentimes people have misconceptions about mercy. What are some of the misconceptions people have? Well, let have? me give you two, Pastor Dennis. Number one, uh, mercy is not softness. What do you mean by that? Which means acting as though someone's transgression doesn't matter. So mercy is not sticking our sin, uh, head in the sand and hoping that some kind of sin or evil or problem will go away. Mercy is not ignoring what other people have said about you or done to you, right? Correct. And the second one, Pastor Dennis, is sentimental. Shedding tears, but not doing nothing about the situation. You know, a lot of people think just sentiment is mercy. They'll hear about a yeah. tragedy, uh, something bad will happen, and they'll shed a few tears to say, I'll mm-hmm. pray for you, but they never do anything about it. And what you're saying is that that's not mercy. Yeah. Well, then what is mercy? How would it's you describe sympathy mercy? sympathy in action, Pastor. It's, it's sympathy, sympathy in, in action. Demonstrating mercy brings great blessing over our lives and other people's lives. We well, you know the word mercy actually comes from a Latin word, which means to feel within. It literally means being willing to get into someone else's skin yes. and do something because of the feeling or emotion that you have. Mercy is sympathy and action. And according to Jesus, this demonstrating mercy great, brings great blessings to our lives and great blessings to others' lives as well. Uh, what was that verse again that Jesus said in the Beatitudes? In the Beatitudes, here it is, Matthew chapter 5, verse 7. God blesses those who are merciful. For they will be shown mercy. God blesses those who are merciful. And so this week, we want to learn how to become more merciful towards others. In the process, uh, God will use us to minister to others, to encourage others, to help others. But also in the process, uh, Jesus said we will experience more of God's blessings in our lives. The more merciful we become towards others, the more blessable we become in our lives, and the more we'll experience of God's best in our lives. Now, I'm here this week with Pastor Sidney Hidalgo. Um, face to face, and we're talking about one of the Beatitudes, Matthew chapter 5, verse 7, where Jesus said, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Yeah. Now, yesterday, Pastor said, you talked about how mercy is not softness, it's not forgetting other people's mm-hmm. transgressions against us. Mercy is not sentiment, it's not just yes. shedding a few tears, but mercy is sympathy in action. Yes. It's really doing something for others, to help others, to encourage others because of the compassion you feel towards them. But mm-hmm. tell us tell us some reasons as to why we should show mercy to others. Well, before I do that, Pastor, one of the things that I love about Scripture is Jesus was never, will never ask of something of us that he hasn't done. Right. And the reason why we should show mercy Mercy is this reason why God has shown mercy to us. Well, I've been a recipient of God's mercy. You've been a recipient of God's mercy. Yes. The Bible talks about God's mercy, right? All the time in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. There's many scriptures we can read, but let's go ahead and read this one. God is so rich in his mercy, and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. Well, and I remember when I was spiritually dead. You remember when you were spiritually dead? <laughs> well, I remember I was spiritually dead. 1993, uh, I came to life. You came to life. You came met Jesus Christ. What was your life like before you came to oh, faith? Oh, drugs, here? drinking, not living outside God's will. Uh, that was my story as well. <laughs> but God, we didn't deserve his salvation, 
that that's God right. showed mercy to us, and that's why we should yeah. be merciful to others. Uh, mm-hmm. The Lord wants us to treat others in the same way He's treated us. Uh, mm-hmm. What's another reason as to why we should show mercy to others? Well, the Scriptures tell us we have to show mercy to others. Because God instructs us to show mercy he to others. He shows us, and in the book of uh, uh, Micah says this in chapter 6, verse 8. It says this, O people, the Lord has told you what is good, and this is what He requires of you, to do what is right, and to love mercy. And to walk humbly with your God. Yes. God says if you want to do things right, you gotta you gotta do what's right, love mercy, walk humbly with your God. So God uh, we need to show mercy because God's been merciful towards us, because God instructs us to show mercy to others. Yes. What's the third reason for showing mercy to others? Because we're gonna need mercy in the future. Well, I've, I I've know needed, I'm gonna need it, even uh, as a believer. Yeah. <laughs> well, we we've needed mercy in the times past, but we're gonna need mercy in the future. That's correct. Uh, do you know anybody who's perfect? No, I do not. I, I don't either. I do I'm not. not perfect. You're not perfect. And the no. listeners are not perfect as well. That's correct. So we're all going to mess up, fail, fall, make yes. a mistake sometime in the future. That's correct. We're going to need mercy from others. And the Bible says a man reaps what, his so- what he sows. So if we sow mercy, we'll reap, reap mercy this. in the future. And then That's what's correct. the fourth reason you can think showing, of? Well, the other one would be showing mercy to others by brings us a blessing. When we show mercy to others, it brings blessings. Right. Remember, Jesus said, blessed are the merciful. The word blessed is it actually means uh, it means to be happy. Jesus says, happy are the merciful. In other words, if you want to be happy in life, you got to learn and practice this quality yes. of mercy. And the more you learn this quality of mercy, the happier you're going to be in your life. Remember what it says in Proverbs 14, 21 there? And, and, and Proverbs chapter 14, 21 reads like this. Happy are those who are kind to the needy. And what, what about Proverbs eleven seventeen? 17? It reads this way. Your own soul is nourished when you show mercy. Your own soul is nourished when you show mercy. So there yes. are Four good reasons as to why we need to show mercy to others, because God showed mercy to us, because the Scripture tells us to be merciful to us, because we're going to need mercy in the future, and because showing mercy to others brings us blessing. Now, I'm here this this week with Pastor Sidney Hidalgo, pastor of Celebration Slidell in Louisiana, and we're talking about the benefits and blessings that come along with showing mercy to others. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 7, Blessed are the merciful, merciful. for they shall obtain mercy. Mm-hmm. We've learned why we should show mercy to others, but here's the, we want to look at for the next couple of days, how can we show mercy to others? Mm-hmm. What are some things we can do to demonstrate mercy, kindness, and compassion to others? Well, Let's talk about two of those today. Pastor Sidney, yes, what's one thing you would say? Uh, the first one would be being patient with people. Being patient with people is one way we can show mercy to others. Now, honestly, I've not been good at being patient all my life. How about you? <laughs> no, nah, I'm still working on it. I'm sure the people that stand in Starbucks and those long lines are learning how to be patient too. <laughs> yeah. Do you still have people in your life that irritate you and frustrate you? Yes. And you usually get on the your closest nerves, people to me sometimes. All those kinds of things. <laughs> and I'm sure I do it to them too. Yeah. I remember I, I, I became a Christian and, um, and, I, and I had a, uh, I had a guy named Bob I was witnessing to. Bob was, uh, he was from the Jewish background. Mm. And I wanted to win in faith in Christ, but Bob was the most irritating person on the planet. <laughs> Man, one time I was uh, sitting in the cafeteria at the uh, university and try, probably trying to impress some girls, something yeah, like that. And Bob right. spotted me and I tried to duck. I didn't want to see him. But right. he came right over to me, slammed his plate down <laughs> on the table where I was. He had spaghetti and meat sausage, just went all over my shirt. And uh, man, I wanted to kill Bob, but uh, <laughs> but the Lord spoke to me in that moment and said, "You need to be kind to him and show mercy to him, and be yes. patient with him." And I had to learn a lesson that day. If I want to, be, if I want to influence people for the kingdom of God, yes. I got to learn how to be patient with people. Yes, you know, some of the, one of the hardest places sometimes to show mercy and patience is in our own home. In our own home. Because they, they watch every step. These are the people you live with. People they see your with. flaws. They see your strengths. But most people always focus on their flaws. Right. So you know, whether it's your spouse or whether yes. it's your child or children or whomever it is, yes. I mean, that's where you got to start showing mercy and kindness and compassion mm-hmm. and patience to others. So, yeah. so you're saying we can show mercy to other people by being patient with people. In fact, the Bible says you must show mercy to others, or God won't show mercy to you. And it says in, uh, read what it says in James chapter 3, verse 17. You see that verse? Uh, James chapter 3, verse 17 reads this. The wisdom from above is first pure, then peace, loving, gentle. It's, and it's also full of mercy and good fruits. So the, the wiser we are, the more merciful we become in our life. What's another uh, way that we can show mercy to others? Another way we show mercy to other people, it's helping hurting people around us. Now, there, it's, it's uh, significant that you would say that because there are lots of hurting people around us. Yes. 
people hurting people from all kind of backgrounds, whether they're children or teenagers or mm-hmm. whether they're adults, single adults or married adults or senior adults. There are lots of hurting people around us. But you know what I've noticed? Oftentimes we're too busy or self-focused to notice that people around us are hurting. Yes. And Jesus told a story about that, the story of the Good Samaritan. Remember that story? Yes. And so obviously what makes this story so amazing is that someone gets hurt. Yeah. And tons of people pass him by, but one man stops yeah. and he sees a need needs to be met. And he's from a different tradition, I mean, tr- a different type of tradition and a different culture yet, but he makes time to help him. Yeah, I don't know if tons of people pass by. We know at least two people, both yes. of them are religious leaders. One yes. was a Jewish priest, the other yeah. was a Jewish Levi, yeah. and they didn't stop to help this Jewish guy yeah. who had been hurt, injured, but a Samaritan, somebody like you said, from another race, another culture, another yes. ethnic background, was yeah. the one who stopped and helped him. And most people know that story is found in Luke chapter 10. And the Bible says we're to be like that. We're to we're to be helping her people around us. Also, uh, we can show mercy to others in other kinds of ways as well. Uh, what's the third kind of way we can show mercy Giving to Giving people others? a second chance. This is very important. Uh, it's very important because people are going to disappoint us. People yes. are going to sometimes hurt us. Now, normally if somebody hurts us or disappoints us, we want to do one of two things. We want to get even yep. or we want to write them off, right? Yes. Have you ever felt like that? <laughs> I've been in both areas. <laughs> You've been in both areas. If someone hurts us or disappoints us, we don't want to give them a second chance. Our natural inclination toward those is to try to get even. In fact, the Bible addresses that in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 and 32. Read those verses for uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1. Uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 and 32. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, here it is, be kind to each other. Tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. Now that last part of it helps us it helps us those verses become real palatable for us because it says, "Remember how God's been merciful towards you." Yes. And you're to be merciful towards others. You're to give other people a second chance. Man, sometimes that's hard to do, right? Yes, it is. And obviously a, a prime example of what it's like to have a second chance is Jesus. He's given us more than one chance. Yes, he has. More than two chances. Yes. Correct. I, I tell people, you know, I, I, I'm not going to fall out with anybody mm-hmm. until they've treated me worse than I've treated Jesus. That's a man. That's a good point. Uh, you know, because the truth of the matter is the Lord has been so gracious and so mm-hmm. merciful to us that we've got to be willing to extend that kind of mercy and grace to other people as well. So we can show mercy to others in different kinds of ways. We can show mercy to others by, uh, we can show mercy to others by being patient with them, by helping hurting people, by giving people a second chance. Uh, what's another way that we can be merciful towards others? Doing good to those who hurt us, which can be kind of hard for most Christians to do because now here we are we're getting hurt but the scriptures are telling us to do good yeah it's what it's, not only is scripture telling us that Jesus told us that Jesus yes. said in Luke chapter 6 verses 35 and 36 love your enemies do good to them be merciful to them just as your father is merciful that's a hard thing I sometimes I wish Jesus hadn't said it that that's right I wish Jesus had said stick it to him <laughs> or hurt him right back that's correct or that's hurt correct. him even more than they hurt yes. you but Jesus said don't do that love your enemies do good to them be merciful just as your father is merciful you know if you really boil it down mercy is giving people what they need not what, they, what they deserve, deserve. what they yeah. need truth of the matter is we all deserve judgment Uh, We all deserve all those kinds of things, but what we need is love and forgiveness and acceptance and mercy, and and, and, and we need to show that same kind of stuff to others like the Lord has shown to us. In fact, whoever's hurt us the most in our lives needs the same mercy from us that we've received from Mm -hmm. the Lord. Remember what it says in Romans chapter 12. uh, Read those verses, Romans Romans chapter 12. 12, I'm going to read verse 19 through 21. uh, 21. It reads like this. Never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coils of shame on their heads. Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. Amen. Now, I'm here this week with Pastor Sidney Hidalgo from Celebration Church in Slidell, and we're talking about the subject of mercy. 
And the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5, verse 7, Jesus said, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy, they shall receive mercy. And we've talked about how, how in the Beatitudes, Jesus is teaching us how to become more blessable in our lives. So we can experience God's greatest of blessing in our lives. We talked uh, in the earlier part of the week about why we should give mercy to others. Yeah. And then we've been talking for the last couple of days about how we can give mercy to others. You've talked about, uh, read through us that list of reasons as to how we can show mercy to others. Well, we want to be patient with people. Right. We want to help the hurting people around us. Right. We want to be giving people, we want to give people a second chance. Right. And doing good, doing good to those who hurt we us. We want to do good to those, even to those who hurt us. Yes. Uh, what's another way that we can show mercy to others? Reaching, and this is, I can, I can, like, this one means a lot to me. And the reason why is because, uh, once again, let me just say this with your Pastor Dennis. I wasn't the most popular person in the world. Right. But what I love about this, this is the last part we like to share about this point when it comes to showing mercy, reaching out to the unpopular people. Reaching out to those who are unpopular. Now, one of the unpopular disciples of Jesus was a man named Matthew, right? Yeah. Why do you think he was so unpopular? Because he was a tax collector. He would like work for the IRS in that That's day. right. That's how he was collecting money. Uh, <laughs> and people didn't think, well, tax collectors in the first century, not only because they were collecting taxes for the government, but also yeah. oftentimes they were, they were, they were thieves. They, were, they would steal some yes. of those things, and they had protection because they worked with the government. Yes. But uh, Matthew became a great man of God. He was the one inspired to write the first of the Gospels. And, uh, but Matthew, Matthew not only was unpopular himself, but he wanted his unpopular friends to get to know the Lord as well. Yes. In fact, Matthew chapter 9 tells us about what Matthew did to reach his unpopular friends. And Matthew chapter 9, verses 10 and 12 reads like this. Matthew invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as a dinner guest, along with the tax collectors and other disreputable sinners. sinners. Thank right. you. But when the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with such scum? Look at that word there. Yeah. Right? The yeah. next verse says, when Jesus heard this, he said, healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. Now, here's the thing. The Pharisees are attacking Jesus. The, script, the religious leaders that they were attacking Jesus for hanging out with the wrong crowd. And Jesus said, you know what your problem is? You don't understand the true nature of mercy. You see, the Pharisees thought that mercy was simply forgiving people and helping people who need help. Yeah. But Jesus said mercy also includes building bridges of love to the unpopular. Yes. Who are some of the, uh, when I think about the unpopular people of our day, it, uh, lots of people kind of, I think about a homeless guy. I was sharing this story mm -hmm. earlier today. Homeless guy. I didn't know he was homeless. He actually mm -hmm. showed up at our church several years after Hurricane Katrina. He looked he was uh, he looked well dressed, well cared for, successful. Mm -hmm. And he introduced himself to me, and I didn't know him. He said, mm -hmm. "You don't remember me, Pastor?" Dennis. He said, "I was a homeless guy here mm -hmm. outside this church. I, I would come into the church building because you guys gave free coffee." He yeah. said, "When Hurricane Katrina came, they swept, took us away to another state. There, people, a church welcomed us in, cared for us, helped us." Mm -hmm. He said, "I got my life on track." He said, uh, "I started working." He said, "Now." On my own business, I'm teaching a boys' Bible study class. Mm -hmm. He said, but it all started when the people of Celebration Church welcomed me and loved me and showed mercy to me. That's Which right. reminder to us, to me and to you, and to mm -hmm. all who are listening, if we would just show mercy, we'll be like Jesus to other people. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, Jesus said, he will bless us in great, in great ways in the coming days. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Face to Face with Celebration Church. 